Today I'm going to show you how to use duplicate stitch to weave in your ends. Hi, welcome to Sherry Knits. I love knitting and I want you to love it too. Today I'm going to show you how to weave in your ends using duplicate stitch. It is not the easiest thing to do, but it is the best. Let's get started. Today I'm going to show you my very favorite way to weave in ends and that is using duplicate stitch. So I have my stockinette swatch here and my tapestry needle. And since this is the front of the fabric, I'm going to turn it over and show you how to do duplicate stitch on the back to weave in your ends. Normally we would take this end that's attached and weave it in, but in order for you to see what I'm doing, I'm going to use a contrasting color to show you the technique. And it'll be a little clearer to you to see what's happening, I think. So we weave in the yarn on our tapestry needle and I really love these Haya Haya darning needles. They have a nice big eye and this bent tip. And I think that bent tip makes it just a little bit easier to, to manipulate and get, get in and out of the stitches a little bit easier. So I'm gonna start just in the middle. Normally, like I said, I would start here at the end and bring it down and work across but because I'm not attached with the yarn, I'm just going to start somewhere in the middle. And what you're doing with duplicate, duplicate stitch is you're actually duplicating the knit stitch on the other side. So we're going to begin by going up a stitch and you'll notice the loop that I went through looks like a frown. There's a frown and a smile and a frown and a smile. I'm going to go up the frowns with this technique. So you go up and then you angle just a little bit to the left and go up the next frown and then pull it through. Now what we're doing is we're following this knit stitch that you see on the other side. So we're going to go around and down that frown and now I want to go back down the first stitch that I went through and pull it. So you can see you have something here that looks like the knit stitch. And now just continue across. I'm going to work left to right and so here is the bottom of that stitch. I'm going to follow that line and go up, angle a little bit to the left, and go through that same stitch that I had gone through before. So you'll be going through every stitch two times. You'll be going, doing it up and then, a, and then coming down. So I came up here, I'm following this loop. So I wanna go down here, angle a little bit to the left and go down. Now you could also work this technique from right to left, whatever feels best to you. And then you would be doing all your angling um, to the left, well, to the right. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> you would be doing the opposite. So here I'm going to follow it up and to the left. Follow that over, down and to the left. So when you're working to the right, you angle to the left. When you work right to left, you'll be angling to the right. Here's the stitch I'm following, up, angle to the left, and go right up. Now, as you're going through these stitches, you want to make sure that you don't split the yarn, that you just get that whole stitch and don't borrow anything from another stitch. Just focus on going all the way through that stitch and pulling it. And when you pull it, you wanna pull it tight enough so you don't have loops that you're going to catch on things, but you don't wanna pull it so tight that it will pucker on the other side. 
So let's just go across and do one more. So here's the stitch I'm following, down, angle to the left, and come down. Now when I'm doing du duplicate stitch, I typically will go an inch to an inch and a half across. And when I'm done, you just simply trim the yarn. So this one would normally be attached, but you trim it and you'll see that it stretches really nice with the fabric, both directions. So you don't have to worry about things coming out. And when you turn it over, even though I've used a different color of yarn, I have, you don't see it. Now, if I pull it, you might be able to see it through there, but normally you'd be using the same color of yarn. And so it will disappear. Now let's take a look at how to do this technique on garter stitch. It's very similar as stockinette, just a little bit different. So let me get my garter swatch here and thread the yarn. The difference is your, your pieces are a little further apart because you've actually have an extra row of stitches in between, but I think it's a little bit easier to see. So again, we're focusing on the frowns, frown, smile, frown, smile, up a frown, angle to the left and go up. And then we're moving to the right, go through that one, angle to the left, come down and see that's where we, we double up and go through that stitch twice. We're following that up, angle to the left, Follow that loop, angle to the left and go down. And so the duplicate stitch in this situation is gonna be a little bit taller, which is fine, but it still creates a nice stretchy weaving in of ends that will move with your fabric, but stay put and not come undone. So this is duplicate stitch. It's my very favorite way to weave in ends. It is a little tricky to get used to at first. Keep practicing, knit up some swatches, practice it because it really is the best. And remember, you can do this because you are the boss of your knitting. I hope that was helpful and you get a chance to use this technique really soon. Let me know what you think about it. I have a lot of patterns on Ravelry. A new one just came out called Let's Go Camping, a really fun and simple hat pattern. Click the link below and you can check out all my Ravelry patterns. And when you complete a pattern, you'll be able to practice duplicate stitch. See you next time.